The man had just taken a bite of a cookie, soon he was stopped by the cop. Especially when they saw the man driving a luxury car, they quickly reached for their holstered guns, all because he was a man of color. Even though both the registration and license had the man's name on them, the cops still ordered the man to get out of the car, claiming suspicion that the car's tag was expired. The man was about to explain. But the cop pressed him against the car. The daughter quickly turned on her phone to record, and got out of the car to argue with them. Seeing this the man immediately told her to get back in the car. The commotion woke up the son sleeping in the back seat. Don't you shoot my son! The man rushed towards the cop, begging them not to shoot, and telling them that his wife is also a sergeant. The cops immediately backed down after hearing this, then returned the documents to the man. However what they didn't know was, they had angered someone they shouldn't have. The man's wife who was a sergeant watched the video later, and she was furious in an instant. She found out that these two white police officers had a long list of complaints every year, and the complainants were mostly from people of color. Even though the chief stated that the department would conduct their investigation about it, the cop decided to handle it her own way. This man actually used duct tape to stick himself to a billboard in order to promote himself. This action instantly attracted a large crowd of onlookers. They all took out their phones and started taking pictures. Seeing the attention the man was delighted and quickly asked passersby to scan the QR code to follow him. The rescue team quickly arrived. Firefighters set up a ladder and climbed up, ready to get the man down, however he refused. He claimed to have rented the advertising space and wouldn't come down before the scheduled time. The firefighter was helpless after hearing this. However what he didn't expect was that there were actual fans who ran over to support him. This made the man even more excited. The firefighter asked if he was wearing underwear. No. Why? You might regret that later. At this moment a cop arrived, confirming that the man had indeed rented the billboard for a day, and they had no authority to make him come down. The frustrated firefighters could only inflate an air cushion below. The cop asked how much time was left on the lease. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> However just as the man was enjoying the attention, the tape on the side suddenly loosened. The firefighter quickly climbed the ladder to rescue the man but were a step too late. The man ultimately fell from above amidst the terrified expressions of everyone around. Fortunately the air cushion protected him and he was unharmed. However his naked body caused passersby to turn away while the man remained indifferent. The team hurriedly covered his body. Oh, he's definitely gonna be famous now. The man put his wife on the railing, and unexpectedly she fell off. Luckily the woman grabbed onto the billboard below. The rescue team quickly arrived at the scene, but the building was too high for the fire ladder to reach. Even with the safety airbag placed below it wouldn't be of much help. They swiftly evacuated the surrounding crowd. The captain came to the balcony to assess the situation. Seeing that the woman couldn't hold on much longer they decided to go down from the rooftop to rescue her. As a precaution they also made arrangements below the billboard. Just as the team was preparing to go down, a firefighter suddenly noticed that the billboard's rope was slowly breaking. They had to expedite the rescue. At this point the glass below was successfully removed, and the team quickly approached the woman hanging in midair. The woman was extremely frightened, pleading with the team to rescue her quickly. Just as the team was about to toss her a safety harness, the rope suddenly snapped. The woman instantly fell. Surprisingly the firefighter below managed to catch her barehanded, and the woman was successfully saved. A group of kids collectively fainted at the edge of the swimming pool. Firefighters rushed to the scene and immediately lifted them onto the lawn for CPR. A firefighter asked a girl what had happened. It turned out that for fun they had poured nitrogen into the pool. However it quickly evaporated taking away the oxygen. The kids quickly suffocated and lost consciousness. The girl pulled her friends out of the pool before the firefighters arrived. And CPR began to take effect the children woke up one by one. The firefighters put oxygen masks on them. Suddenly they noticed that teammate Jack had disappeared in the smoke. They loudly called his name but there was no response. The pool was completely enveloped in nitrogen and nothing was visible. At that moment Jack suddenly emerged from the water. He had rescued a girl who had sunk into the water. The team immediately carried her to an open area. The girl had no pulse. The firefighter continuously pressed her chest and water sprayed out of her mouth. She regained consciousness. The brave firefighter who had counted the slippers on the shore and noticed one person missing had jumped into the water regardless of his own safety. Now a girl suddenly vomited and had trouble breathing. The firefighter said she had severe lung water accumulation resulting in dry drowning. Due to the delayed reaction after the rescue she was immediately placed on a stretcher and taken to the hospital. A group of people was attending a funeral. Suddenly a man fell from the sky, smashing the coffin into pieces. The crowd was instantly thrown into panic. Even the priest was shocked. He had just been about to send someone off to God but now God seemed to have sent someone down. Soon the rescue team arrived. Firefighter discovered that the man had no heartbeat and stopped breathing. He was covered in frostbite. The captain immediately deduced that he was a stowaway, as the location happened to be along the flight path. And stowaways sometimes hide in the aircraft's wheel well. When the landing gear is lowered they can fall out. While the team were handling the body of firefighters, 
firefighters suddenly noticed scratch marks on the man's arm and found a pink nail in his sleeve. This indicated that someone had tried to hold onto him as he fell, implying there were other stowaways on the plane. The team swiftly headed to the airport and conducted a thorough search of the recently passed aircraft. True enough another girl was found in the wheel well. Using a rope to secure herself and avoid falling, the girl was unconscious by this point, and the team immediately began resuscitation efforts. Her pulse was weak and her body temperature was extremely low. They administered warming fluids, and through relentless efforts they managed to revive her. Upon awakening the girl immediately inquired about her brother. After learning of her brother's demise she expressed a desire to leave here and wanted to go home. This boy must be crazy. Even with a group of police cars chasing and blocking him, he continued to speed at 105 miles per hour. What's even more exaggerated is that the boy directly called 911, claiming that many police cars was chasing him. The operator found it very strange and told the boy to pull over. However the boy's next words left the operator astonished. It turned out that this antique convertible belonged to his dad. He had secretly drove it without a driver's license. Unexpectedly the gearshift was broken and the car simply couldn't stop. The police behind immediately sealed off the entire freeway. The boy pleaded with them to quickly find a way to save him because this car was his dad's favorite possession. If he damaged the car his dad would probably kill him. The operator immediately contacted the boy's father who was furious. That car is a 1970 Ferrari Daytona Spider. And if he so much as puts a scratch on it, I swear to God, I... The father was told by the operator to stay calm and deal with the situation once his son was safe. The father immediately got in touch with the boy. Upon hearing his dad's voice, the boy kept apologizing. His father told him that the car was not important, but his safety was the top priority. He asked the boy to obey the operator's instructions. The boy finally began to calm down. The operator quickly arranged for a fire truck to come over. When the fire truck reached a suitable distance, the operator instructed the boy to quickly Quickly pull the handbrake. What? Hit the truck! This man had a bit of bad luck. Just as he tossed a bag of clothes into the recycling bin, he accidentally dropped his car key in. Then he moved a carton box closer and stood on it to reach inside. Unfortunately, his balance was unstable and ended up falling into the bin himself. In panic, he banged on the bin and shouted for help, but the bustling traffic outside drowned out his voice. To make matters worse, the recycling bin could only be opened from the outside. Despite his reluctance to give up, he kicked and tried to pry with his hands, but all in vain. At that moment, he suddenly thought of the car key. He continuously pressed the remote control button, hoping the alarm would attract passersby's attention. Tension. However, the loud noise went unnoticed amid the busy street. As time passed from morning to evening, the seal bin made him increasingly uncomfortable and overheated. From day to night, the man had been trapped for a whole day. Coincidentally, firefighters were completing a rescue mission in the area. Just as she was about to get into the vehicle, she suddenly heard a noise. After looking around and seeing nothing, she turned to leave only to hear the noise again. She glanced at the recycling bin and walked over slowly. Anybody there? Oh, where are you? In here. Standing on it she opened it and indeed found a person inside. The man never thought that his 82-year-old father would have sexually transmitted infection. Not only that, but many old ladies in the nursing home also had slept with his father. Even the old man suffered from it too. The firefighters were all stunned on the spot. Just yeah, now a woman called 911. She said her father locked himself in the room. She and her brother went to have breakfast with their father. Her brother found something growing on his father's belly. But then the father locked himself up without saying anything. The brother said he didn't know what he had grown. Looked like wounds or ulcer. Not until those ungrateful vultures stop circling. Ungrateful? Who do you think pays for this place? You sold my house to pay for it. The firefighter managed to get into the room from the back window via the truck. He checked and found that the thing on his stomach was not a rash. The old man said that he has had this symptom for several weeks. Even down there. Fine, I'll look. The firefighter resisted and took off his pants. An 82-year-old man actually got a flesh-eating STD, and the people who had slept with him would suffer too. The old man's son asked who had been sleeping with his father. They also needed to be taken to the hospital for treatment. After a short silence, an old lady stood up. Then the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Even an old man stood up. What if you slept with one of the women that he slept with? You should probably get the check that too. What kind of a place is this? The woman just went to the ATM to withdraw cash. However, a distress signal was accidentally triggered inside the machine. The woman engrossed in counting her money and didn't notice anything. Casually threw the note into the trash can. Soon a man walked in. Just after completing his transaction, the ATM once again spat out a distress note. The man scrutinized the situation for five minutes but found nothing unusual. He quickly realized it was probably a prank show. So after making a few sarcastic comments, he left. Then another girl entered to withdraw cash. After entering her pin, the cash wouldn't come out. Just as the girl thought the machine was broken, a small note suddenly emerged 
message stating stuck in ATM no cash until call 911. The girl immediately called 911, but the operator instructed her to contact the bank instead. The girl mentioned she heard someone calling for help from inside the ATM. This led to a rapid response from the rescue team. Firefighters extended a camera into the ATM and indeed found a person trapped inside. They promptly used a pry bar to open the ATM door. As the door opened the unfortunate man was successfully rescued. But the question is how the man got in, the firefighters were called. A man was stuck in the gap between the buildings. Unfortunately the man was only discovered by passersby several hours later. It turned out the man was a security guard in the building. Last night he noticed a couple of young people doing graffiti. When they turned to flee, they made a flying leap and jumped into the window of the adjacent building. Although there was a deep gap between the buildings, the man unwilling to be outdone also attempted a leap. Unexpectedly he failed to make it and ended up hanging directly on the window. Despite his efforts his arms gave way and he dropped down. Fortunately his belly was large enough to get stuck in the gap, preventing a fatal fall. One firefighter instructed him to try extending his arms, intending to use a rope to pull him up. However as soon as he raised the hands he slipped down a bit. The captain had to come up with an alternative plan. Based on the man's position they knocked on the door of the apartment below. Before the owner could react the captain began drilling a hole with an electric drill, almost drilling a hole into the man. Then the firefighters started smashing with a hammer and soon created a large hole. After confirming that this position was just right, the captain instructed the man to tighten his belly assuring him that they would pull him in. The two firefighters exerted their strength together and successfully dragged the man inside. Apart from some abrasions on his belly he was unharmed. Who knew having a gut was gonna save my life?